Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Uh, you'll be seeing this on Sunday, August 18th. However, I'm actually recording it a bit early because I got a busy Sunday planned. So it's actually uh, late Saturday afternoon on August 17th. And uh, I'm down here in the shop enjoying, since it is afternoon, an adult beverage. This is uh, Great Lakes Brewing Company Elliot Ness Amber Lager. And I just opened it and just have had a few sips. It's nice. It's a little bit hoppy for a lager, but uh, not bad. Not bad at all. And this is a little treat for me because I did not uh, get to do my normal Friday routine because I had a, an event after work this week. This is a um, Prenasado from Alec Bradley, but it's a factory second. And you can see it is not behaving itself very well. Uh, and that's typical, I find, of these factory seconds. So they're great bargains. You know, the, this is, uh, gosh, I don't remember how much the Prenasados cost, but this is, um, I think this was like $2 when you buy a, a bundle of 20 so, if you don't mind putting up with a slightly tight draw and some burn issues, it's the same flavor. Um, the, the main thing with the factory uh, seconds is that they're using shorter leaf, um, and you know, so it's not going to be as um, consistent a stick from end to end. Anyway, uh, Alec Bradley Prenasado factory second, uh, not not a bad bad deal at all. So. As I enjoy that and, and uh, have some, some beer, I wanted to talk today a little bit about reaming. And the reason I want to talk about reaming is I got this new reamer slash scraper from Phil Rivera. And Phil has just done a fantastic job with this. Now, if you don't know Phil, I'm going to put a link to his channel and, and his Instagram down below. Uh, go, go check him out. Phil is a it, it, he's a craftsman. There's no other way to say it. He does beautiful work. He's a pipe maker. His pipes are phenomenally beautiful, in my opinion. Um, and he he's uh, he likes to play around with uh, ideas. I hope you don't mind me saying that, Phil. But some of his pipes are, are very unique. Uh, not not out of the ordinary. Not not bizarre or anything like that, but just really uniquely beautiful. And he, everything he makes just uh, is, is excellent. And this is no exception. So the, uh, the wood on this is uh, Camatillo, uh, uh, if I'm saying that correctly. This is a, um, a Mexican rosewood or Mexican kingwood. Uh, really fantastic grain in that. I wanted something dark, and he uh, you know, fills really good when you commission with him. He sends you lots of pictures of the process and get your input and everything and he, he just did a fantastic job. He narrowed it down to a couple of woods and I, I chose this one and I really really am happy with the grain. Uh, the scraper blade, it's a triangular blade as you can see. It's stainless steel and there is a um, transition piece here. I should know what that's called. A ferrule. Uh, and the ferrule is brass, uh, transitions very nicely into the stainless steel, and he's got this nice, uh, I believe that's a hand-hammered finish uh, around the, the end there. So really, a, a beautiful piece, and you might be thinking, okay, why, why do you want a pipe tool that looks that nice and, <laughs> and it costs that much? Uh, not, not that it was overpriced, but, uh, you know, you, it's, it's not, uh, you, you can get a set of these Castleford Reamers uh, for, for less than this. Well, the reason is this is not a pipe tool that I'm going to have down here in the shop uh, working on estate pipes and things like that. This is really something that I'm going to keep with my pipe collection. I'm going to display it proudly in my pipe cabinet and I'm going to use it for occasional maintenance. And I'll, I'll explain that to you because I want to kind of talk a bit about reaming, why we do it, the different types of reamers. Uh, I've given bits and pieces of this in, in various restoration videos that I've done, but I've never really talked about uh, cake and cake buildup and, and the need to ream. So let's begin with just what wood is cake. So Briar is an amazing wood. Uh, it's very resistant to burning. And 
because of that resistance, when you first use a pipe, uh, assuming it doesn't have a bowl coating, it's going to... Give me a minute while I look for matches here. Sorry about that. I uh, My lighter is out of fluid and I couldn't find matches. And I hate when cigars have burn issues. It drives me crazy. So you might ask, why in the world am I buying these cheap factory seconds? Well, because I'm cheap. <laughs> So anyway, we're talking, oh boy, all you cigar fans are probably going nuts right now. Anyway, we're talking about cake. So Briar's an amazing wood in that it, it doesn't burn, it's very resistant to burning, and as you're burning um, your tobacco in it, it will char the surface of the wood, as any wood would char. But very quickly, because it's so burn resistant, you start to build a carbon layer on top of that charring. So the charring is carbon, it's carbonized briar. But then you've got the carbonized tobacco that's being formed as, as, as you uh, burn the tobacco. And that is then being added to that carbon coating. So very quickly, after two or three bowls, you start to have this, this boundary layer between the burning tobacco and the wood. And that's why briar pipes are so long-lasting and, and resistant to burnout as long as they're maintained properly and as long as there's not a flaw in the briar in the first place. Now the problem is that that carbon layer that we call cake will continue to build and, and can build quite rapidly, you know, surprisingly fast. This is a problem for two reasons. The most obvious one is eventually you're not going to be able to stick your finger in there to push the tobacco down and I've seen pipes like that, uh, quite a few pipes like that actually. The second problem uh, that's less obvious but it does uh, actually produce issues is that that carbon cake is expanding and contracting with heat at a rate that's different than what the briar is expanding and contracting and because of that it can actually cause the wood to crack and I have seen bowls that are just cracked straight through uh, heavily caked and cracked straight through so for that reason you want to maintain a layer of cake that is not zero so you don't want to go back to bare wood but is not you know, so thick that you can't get your finger in there. And the way to do that is to ream your pipe. Now, I've shown you reamers like the casual pipe there. Mm. <laughs> that one doesn't want to stay in there. This casual cord set of reamers, which is, uh, you know, a pretty good bargain. You get four sizes. They, um, let's go over there. They uh, are two piece, it's a two piece set, so you get a handle. I'll get the smallest one here so I can demonstrate. You get a handle and you get the, the blade portion that clips in there. And then you can take your pipe. I'm going to take the stem off this pipe just because it's easier to handle that way. So you take your, your pipe, you insert your reamer, and you turn it, and that reams out the bowl. Um, these are, the blades are actually angled, so you always want to turn them clockwise. And if you get stuck, you can turn it counterclockwise to, to get it out. Uh, but you really shouldn't be going too aggressively with these, so you shouldn't be getting them stuck, although it does happen. So these are great. Uh, they're fantastic for heavily caked pipes, you know, pipes that really have just a ton of cake in them that I get, you know, on the estate market sometimes or occasionally from a customer. And when you really need to just break through and get that cake out, uh, this, this is a great option. The problem with them is they're all the same shape. So if you have a conical bowl or any oddities to the shape of the bowl, you're only going to be able to ream it in this, uh, what I believe is parabolic shape. But nevertheless, they're, they're good and they're fairly economical. I think a set of these comes in around $30. But the truth is, if you're maintaining your pipes properly, you should never need these. Um, second reamer that I use is this guy here, which is called a senior reamer, and you probably have seen these. You can adjust by turning the screw at the bottom. You can actually close... Sorry, it's harder to talk with a cigar in your mouth than a pipe in your mouth. 
you can actually cause the blades to expand out and ream larger and larger bowls and that's nice because you can start with something that just about fits in the pipe and just kind of ease it up until you're reaming uh, to the extent that you want. It has a more of a taper in the end here so it can deal better with conical bowls although it's still not perfect. Um, not a bad option, not for hogging off large amounts of, of cake. So what I normally do when I'm dealing with an estate pipe is I start with the castle of herds and then I switch to this. Now for my own pipes, you know, for my own rotation of pipes, I don't want to wait until I've got that much cake on them. So these really don't work that well. And I tend to use something like this. This is a little shop-made knife that I, I like because the end is very dull and, and rounded and it makes it easy for me to get in and, and scrape the the walls of the the bowl. And I'll use something like this. I'll sometimes even use a pen knife. And that that works great if you are holding it at the right angle and you're very careful. The problem is you can actually wind up carving instead of scraping. And you don't want to do that. Because if you carve, you're going to take chunks out and you're going to have an uneven surface. Sometimes you're going to cut down to the bare wood. Other places, you know, that, that'll lead to, to burnout if you've got one spot that's bare wood. Uh, it's going to react differently to the heat than the rest of the pipe. And so you can do this, but it's not perfect. Uh, and like I said, I've been doing it for a long time. I can get away with it, but I don't really like doing it with this. It, it, you got to pay careful attention, and it's a slow process. Now, there was a product that was made by Savinelli that I, I had and I cannot find, and I must have given it away because I've looked in all the obvious places, but I, I don't know what happened to it. Uh, I'll put up a picture here of them. You can find them on the net. This was called the Savinelli Fitzall uh, Reamer, and it was similar to the reamer that Phil Rivera is now producing uh, in some ways. Uh, it was a triangular reamer, and I, I somewhat liked it. I liked it a bit more than something like this, uh, for reasons I'll get into when I talk about Phil's reamer. Uh, but it had some drawbacks, some pretty significant drawbacks. It was pointy, um, fairly pointy. Not, I mean, not like poke yourself with a needle pointy, but pointy enough that it would scratch the bottom of the bowl, and I don't like that. And as you can see, Phil's done a really nice job of rounding off the the end of this so that you don't have to worry about scratching the bottom of the bowl as you're reaming. Uh, the second thing I didn't like about it is it was smaller. It was, it, was, it was just not as substantial as this and it just would rock more and I just never really liked using it. I liked the idea but to me it was just never a better tool than just using this knife or, or a pocket knife. Now Having said that, they're still popular. You can still get them uh, on eBay. The 7LE doesn't make them anymore. Uh, they do demand a fairly high price. I mean, I've seen them sell for over $100. I don't think they're worth that, to be honest with you, because uh, I, it was a tool that, like I said, I gave it away. Uh, it just wasn't uh, useful to me. Now, there are some knockoffs out there now. Um, I know one of the big online retailers is selling a, a knockoff version of it for like $15 or something. Uh, just looking at it, it looks very poorly made, the blade is very thin, it's fluted and hollow grind, and I don't like ho hollow grind tools. Um, I don't want to get into the whole hollow grind versus flat debate, but uh, I like a flat, a flat back to my blade, and these are perfectly flat. Um, you know, basically, you got three blades here, and each one has a flat back. Uh, also, has a flat front, but that's, that's another point. Um, so I, I like... I don't like a hollow grind, which would be sort of like taking a divot out of the center of this. The argument is that when you do that, it's easier to sharpen them because you only have to sharpen the remaining metal. That's true, but it's also easier to break the edge of the blade, so you wind up with a less... Um, the, the, the edge is not as strong as it would be if you didn't have a hollow grind. So I don't like hollow grind. The Knockoffs tend to be hollow grind, they've got flutes down the middle, they're smaller blades, they're pointy, all the things that were wrong with the Savinelli fits all, plus some new additional problems. So I would stay away from those. Um, but this guy that Phil has made really is designed right. So that flat surface means it's very easy to sharpen this. Not that you're going to need to sharpen it very often, but an occasional touch-up on a stone, 
And by the way, Phil polishes this on, on a stone. Uh, it's really remarkable how, how much uh, handwork went into producing this thing. These are all polished. They're very sharp. The, the edges are quite sharp. You could probably cut yourself on it. I'm not going to try. Um, all in all, I, I just think it's a superior tool to what Savinelli was putting out and certainly to anything else that's on the market today. Now, the way you would use this is, uh, it depends on how frequently you smoke a pipe, but for me it's about once a month I need to just trim back the cake. And all you need to do with this, and th this is the beauty in it, it's so simple, you make sure that two points are registering on the inside of the bowl. So you just set it in there and rock it until you got the two points, and then you just rotate the bowl around. Now I'm not going to do very much with this because this pipe has been uh, maintained and it doesn't need to be reamed. Um, but that's it. It's that simple. Register it against those two edges and it doesn't matter where you go. You're always going to be registering as long as you've got those two edges in contact. That's always going to be presenting a perfect 60 degree cutting edge to the cake. And it'll be tangential to the inside of the circle. So it's always going to be just scraping the cake with that 60 degree blade. And you just go around until you're at the level that you want. Now, You'll see all kinds of things about, um, oh, and by the way, Phil's done a really nice video on doing this, and I'll, I'll link to that below uh, if you want more detail on how to actually use it. But uh, you'll see all sorts of advice on how much cake you should have. You know, you should have uh, an, a nickel's thickness of cake or a quarter's thickness or whatever, a dime, whatever piece of change happened to be in the guy's hand when he made up the rule. In my opinion, you don't want it to be too thick and you don't want to be a bare wood. And that's what's most important. So, you know, if you want to be able to get your hand and finger in there and, and stuff the pipe, you know, you know what the pipe was like when you first got it. You want to get close to that, but leave a little surface of, of cake. And if you do this once a month, you'll never have to worry about reaming your pipes. It, it's that simple, and this will only take... I mean, you just do part as part of your normal cleaning. Uh, just once a month go around the bowl a few times, dump out the, the carbon, and you're done. So, highly recommend these. They're, they're, they're beautifully made. It is a fantastic tool, one that I've been wanting for a long time and just have not been able to find. And I, I'm grateful that Phil Rivera has filled the void there. Uh, again, this isn't a shop tool for me. This is going upstairs with my pipes, and uh, I will be using it regularly as I maintain them. So, I hope you found that uh, interesting and of some value. Now if you don't want to go out and get one of these that doesn't mean you can't do the maintenance. You know, use a, just use a regular knife and the same thing, just try to maintain that angle. But This just makes it easy. So I hope that helps you out with your own pipes. Uh, helps you maintain them a bit better. Maybe make it less likely that you're going to have to send one to me in the future, which is fine by me. Uh, I want pipes out there being smoked, not sitting in my shop. So guys, with that, uh, let me just quickly say, because I know this is going a bit long, uh, I'm not going to be around for a while because I'm heading up to Vermont in the middle of the week. If all goes well, yeah, it's going out. If all goes well, I've got a couple of videos planned that we'll post between now and when I return, uh, but I'll be back um, not this coming Sunday, but the following Sunday. So you'll basically be... Sorry, you think I'd learn by now. You can't talk with this in your mouth. You'll basically be um, without me for one weekend. I'm sure you'll all be able to survive. So, friends, thanks again for, for stopping by and, and for watching. I really appreciate it. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.